Hello, this is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage during the summer of 2020. The title of this lecture is Solving Separable Differential Equations in Initial Value. And the reason we're doing that is it's one of our learning objectives. It's Learning Objective 24 from our course syllabus. If you can arrange a differential equation so that the y's are on one side, and the x's are on the other, then the differential equation is separable. You've separated the x's and the y's. And if you can do this, then you solve this by integrating both sides, this side with respect to y and this side with respect to x. And then we solve for y, and that means we're finding an explicit solution for y. And I will ask you to find the interval of validity for those problems. And recall that the interval of validity is the range of the independent variable, x in this case, on which the solution is valid. And so we have to avoid division by zero, complex numbers, logarithms of negative numbers, uh, or zero, and so on and so forth. Uh, most of the solutions that we will get from separable differential equations will not be valid for all values of x. And to have an uh, initial value problem, that means that the interval of validity must also contain the initial point. Okay, let's uh, wade right into it. Here's an example one. You just solve this differential equation, dy dx is equal to 6y squared times x. And our initial condition is that y evaluated at the point 1 is equal to 1 over 25. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so we get to separate the variables. So first of all, we multiply both sides by dx to change it to a differential. And then I'm going to divide uh, both sides by y squared. Now, after I do all of that, here's what I have. y to the minus 2 dy is equal to 6x dx. We have now separated variables. So now we integrate both sides. When you integrate this side and you want to follow all these steps, you'll get 3x squared plus c, where c is a constant of integration. And when you integrate this side, you will add 1 to the exponent, that is y to the minus 1, divided by the new exponent, minus 1, so it is minus 1 over y. And we group all our c's together in this common c. But now we can use the initial condition to solve for what c is. So I plug in x to be 1 and uh, y to be 1 over 25, and I solve for c, and I find out c is minus 28. So I substitute that back into this equation, and I get this. But now I have to solve explicitly for y. So when I solve for y, and again, you should verify all of these steps for yourself, y of x is equal to 1 over 28 minus 3x squared. Now, the interval validity has to avoid 0. So we have to stay away from x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 28 over 3. That breaks the real number line into three possible uh, intervals. This interval, this interval, and this interval. But then I have to say which one of these includes 1. And when I think about the numbers, I say, oh, it's this middle interval. It does include the point 1. And so that is the interval validity for this problem. Here's another example. Um, here is y prime equal x y cubed all over the square root of 1 plus x squared and y evaluated at 0 is equal to minus 1. You know what to do. Let's see how you do. Okay, well we have to uh, separate the variables and so we uh, work to do that and we get the y's on one side and the x's are on the other. Now make sure you can do this, but this is what we have. y to the minus 3d, y is equal to x. This is 1 plus x squared whole to the minus 1 half, dx. 
then what we're going to do is integrate both sides. Now this side, we're integrating y to the minus 3, so I add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent I get, minus 1 over 2y squared. To integrate this side, I have to use a u substitution, and that is going to be u is equal to 1 plus x squared, and that means that uh, dx is going to equal du divided by 2x. So I make that substitution and reverse it, and whenever I integrate this one, I get the square root of 1 plus x squared plus c. And again, make sure all of this stuff, uh, you can follow all these calculations and do them yourself. But now we're going to find out what c is, so I'm going to use this initial condition. I'm going to put x to be 0 and y to be minus 1. And I solve that, and c is equal to minus 3 halves. So that means I can put minus 3 halves in this for c. I get minus 1 over 2y squared is equal to this minus 3 halves. Now we have to solve explicitly for y. So I work to solve explicitly for y, and I get y squared is this, and y is equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3 minus 2, the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now, I have to figure out, is this the plus or minus solution? But, since y at 0 is minus 1, that tells me that the negative is the correct answer. Now I have to look at this, and I have to say, what do I have to avoid? Well, you see, I can't have 0 in the denominator, and also I can't have a negative number. So I have to have the denominator 3 minus 2, the square root of 1 plus x squared, that's what's underneath this radical, must be greater than 0. So we solve for what x has to be. So x squared is less than 5 over 4. That means the absolute value of x is between uh, minus the square root of 5 over 2 and plus the square root of 5 over 2. So this is our interval validity and we showed the solution to be this one. Let's look at another example. You want to solve this initial value problem. y prime is equal to e to the minus y at times 2x minus 4 and y at 5 is equal to 0. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. When you separate variables you will get this. And so now you can integrate both sides. The antiderivative of e to the y is going to be e to the y, and when I integrate this term by term I get x squared minus 4x plus c. Now I use my initial condition when x is 5, y is 0 to figure out that c is minus 4, so now I have the solution that e to the y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 4. But we wanted to find the interval of validity, and I ask you to solve explicitly for y. So we have to take the natural logarithm of both sides. So we get that the ln of um, e to the y is going to be y, and this is going to be the natural logarithm of this expression. That should probably be absolute values. And so we have to stay away from places where this is equal to 0. So that has to be uh, bigger than uh, 0. And um, so that means let's find out where that is is equal to 0. And when we do, we have to use the quadratic formula, and we get x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 to the square root of 2. Now that divides the real number line into uh, several pieces, this piece and this piece and the piece in the middle. But the piece in the middle, you can see the quadratic is negative there. So really I'm talking about this interval over here and this interval over here, and from my initial condition, I have to take the one that includes 5, so that means the interval validity is this one. So here is our solution, and there is the interval of validity. Uh, one more problem. Uh, you're supposed to solve this initial value problem, some different variables here. Uh, dr d theta equals r squared over theta r at 1 is equal to 2. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, we can separate variables this way. 
and we will integrate both sides. Now when we take the integral of r to the minus 2, we get minus 1 over r. And we take the integral of 1 over theta d theta, we get the natural logarithm, the absolute value of theta, plus c. Now I can use this in my initial condition to find out what c is. So I substitute theta to be 1 and r to be 2, and I get that c has to be minus 1 half. That means that minus 1 over r is this, and that means that r is equal to 1 over 1 half minus the natural logarithm of the absolute value of theta. So that is going to be our solution, but we have to find the interval of validity. Well, we have to stay away from the denominator being 0, and so let's figure out where the denominator is equal to 0. And we see the denominator is equal to 0 when this is equal to um, 1 half, and I take I exponentiate both sides and I get um, the absolute value of theta is equal to the square root of e and uh, in, in fact um, what happens is uh, since it was the absolute value that means that theta could be plus or minus the square root of e. Now that breaks the real number line into four pieces one, two, three, and four. But then I say which one has one they equal 1, and I determine this is the interval of validity. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other.